Hello, welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. Uh, my name is Martin Turner, and this is a series we're running right the way through 2017, uh, so I hope you can catch all 52 episodes. Now, today we're going to talk about line drawing and editing. Um, so, uh, Cork Express is, is the very best layout software, it's the best desktop publishing software, uh, but it overflows into other areas. And there are some things it can do which uh, might be more convenient to do in Quark Express than in something else, which you might not have thought about. Now, um, let's go straight away to the screen, and we're going to go over here to the line drawing tools. And, and you've got um, up here, you've got the, uh, the line tool, that's just a regular line. You've got the orthogonal line tool, it's only uh, up, down, uh, or uh, left, right, or 45 degrees. And now we've got a, a palette which offers various tools. Now, um, you can see that one of them is already broken out down here. It's the freehand drawing tool. I've got to say, I usually work with a pen, Wacom pen and tablet uh, in uh, Quark Express. And if you're using a pen and tablet, freehand drawing tool really works very well indeed. If you're using a mouse, well, it's a bit like all uh, drawing with a mouse on in any software. Uh, it, it's, if you're good at it, that's great. But if you're not, it can be a bit hit and miss. But uh, let's go back to uh, over here uh, and let's instead go to the Bezier pen tool. Uh, now Bezier curves are where you draw them out like this and they go wherever you want and you just click on it and drag and you can have whatever you want. I'm not sure what I'm drawing here, that could be the Loch Ness Monster. Um, and when you join it up it becomes a shape. So we can give that a color. I'm going to go to my color menu, color palette over here, and we'll give that uh, uh, that color, and you can see it fills in. And equally, uh, we could give that none, and give that a, a, a border color. Uh, so I'm going to go down to frame, down here at the bottom of the screen, the measurements panel, and just increase that frame to um, uh, eight points, and you see there. Now, that's all very well. <coughs> um, uh, if you draw more quickly, then you tend to get more points. Draw less quickly, get less points, fewer points. Um, here's one uh, I've done drawing, uh, and uh, it was a bit jagged at it quite quickly, uh, but you can uh, then edit each point individually. So if I click back on here, so I'm back on the left-hand side of my screen, and I'm going to go to uh, the... Um, select point tool. I can just select that point there and uh, if I come down to the bottom here on the, on the measurements palette in the home you can see I've got various kinds of, uh, of points so I can make that symmetrical um, I can make it one side, I can make it a corner point so back to symmetrical, you see the way that changes that, let's just zoom in on that so uh, I've made that symmetrical. Uh, if I go back to making it a corner point, you see that what's happened there. So corner point, symmetrical, um, down here, corner point, symmetrical, corner point. Um, and I can also change the exact position of this. This is quite unusual. Very, very few bits of software offer you that. And the exact angle um, where that point is, um, sorry, the, the left handle length, the right handle length and the right angle. And that is a, a level of precision which you only really usually get in CAD CAM software. So I can just move those out and as you look at the bottom of the screen there, um, you'll see those numbers changing as I do it. Um, I could change those uh, manually as it were by hand by just typing in new numbers in there if I wanted that. Uh, sometimes that's an easy way of doing it. Um, I remember in the early days of, of Bezier curves, you could spend hours trying to get it just right. And if only I'd had uh, this uh, back then in, in Corel Draw or the early versions of Illustrator, actually I think even current Illustrator, it would have made life much easier. Now, uh, let's go back out and um, let's see what else we can do. Um, now, obviously you can put text on a curve. So uh, I'll draw a little curve here. 
Um, and now I'm going to take a text tool and just double click on that and just start typing. This is text on a curve. So let's just do that again because people often get confused about this. So what I'm going to do is uh, go to my drawing tool, draw something, that's a bit of a smoother curve. Now I'm going to the text content tool, double click, and this is text on a curve. We're going to make that a little bit larger uh, just to um, see what we're doing. So uh, once I've put my text on a curve, there are more things I can do with it. So if I go now to the bottom of the screen and go to text box, um, so let's just get on there again, uh, we'll click on that, and I'll go to text box at the bottom. Over here, we've got uh, various options for curve text, which is the standard. Then we've got warp text. We've got um, uh, a couple other things. So let's do warp text. And, and just let's zoom that in and see what's happened there. Now, I, I would not usually use this particular uh, version, uh, but uh, you can if you want. And then we've got uh, another option, which uh, skis it a different way, and another option, which uh, kind of does it like a like Hollywood sign. In fact, if we just change that uh, to Hollywood, uh, you'll see what I mean. Um, again, usually, the, the most useful one, that's the text measurements tool, or text measurements uh, palette rather. So here at the bottom of the screen, I've got text, uh, text box measurements here and um, uh, over on the right. And I can also align it to baseline, center, uh, ascent, and align the top with the center, the bottom, uh, and, and so on. Uh, this gives you, you can also even flip it. So, um, uh, using that F, F at the end there, you just flip it over. Now, why is that important? Well, text on a curve isn't just a modern thing. Uh, it, it was used by Lewis Carroll, for example, even medieval monks were doing it. And although your line drawing might be a little bit skew if you can go to uh, Utilities um, and go to ShapeMaker, and ShapeMaker will, will happily make you things like uh, spirals as text paths, uh, which you can then uh, type on in spiral form. This is text on a spiral. Um, you can do uh, text on circles, anything else you like. Now, okay, uh, that's all great, but there's, there's more. Uh, there's a, a full suite of uh, tools for adding and removing points, for, for converting points, for cutting lines, uh, and so on. But uh, let's look at some other stuff because this is really quite exciting. I'm going to do just a circle here and I'm going to do uh, another circle here. Uh, we're going to give them a couple of colors just to make it easy to, to spot them. So we're going to get a window uh, colors for a second. We're just going to give that one uh, magenta and this one uh, cyan. Um, and now what I'm going to do is select both of them and go to item Merge or split path. So let's do that again. So uh, item, merge or split paths. And I can now take the intersection of them, which is that. Uh, I'm going to back command Z on that to go back. I can take the uh, union of them, which puts two together, makes one new shape of the two. I can make the difference. Uh, I can make the reverse difference. So it depends on which one you selected first for that. I can do uh, the exclusive or, so remove the middle. Uh, I can do the uh, combine. Um, and now I've done that, I can uh, split outside paths or split all paths. So right now, although you don't see it, the information is still there. But if I now want to split that out, I can split outside paths or I can split, let's go back on that, um, merge or split paths, I'm going to have, let's say, the difference. Now let's, let's go back to the union, to, to the exclusive all. Um, and I'm going to split uh, all paths. And the result is that I've got all three, I've got two shapes, um, the outside and the inside. Let's go back again. And if I now split uh, outside paths, 
uh, then I've just got one shape, which is just that with its cut out. Now, combine that with super step and repeat and the line tool and the, um, uh, yeah, and the shape maker, and you've got all kinds of possibilities for quickly creating graphic devices from uh, within Quark. Uh, um, uh, let's, let's say we're going to do that. Uh, Make those radial, yeah. Let's let's um let's make those pointed. Uh, create that. Um, that's actually created as a text box. That's okay. Um, and we we'll give that a color. And now we're going to give. Let's take a star tool. Um, if you uh, click on the star tool uh, without dragging, it and it gives you all the the different possibilities. So let's do uh, uh, forty five. Uh, number of spikes, let's do spike depth 40, and we'll do random spikes a bit, uh, 50. And um, let's now take that and combine it with that. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't have to have anything in it. And we're now going to just take the, uh, the difference between those two. And, okay, it's not the most attractive shape in the world, but um, if you want to have that now coming to eat up your text, um, uh, you can suddenly have all kinds of things going on. So that's just a very quick overview of some of the drawing tools. I hope that was interesting. Uh, my name is Martin Turner, and I'm the author of Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. Uh, all this stuff is in the book and much more. You can get it from Amazon or your local bookstore. And I hope to see you again in the rest of the series, which is running right the way to 2017.